So day two begins. And with this thing being out of the truck now, well, I was able to easily get that guy off with my Pittman puller. So that part was good, but still having a little bit of an issue with that one because the Pittman puller won't fit. The teeth on it are a little too wide for the tiny gap between the center link and the idler. So I'm gonna try to do this instead. Since it's out of the truck now, it's not gonna move around too much and I can beat it straight down with a hammer. So that's what I'm gonna try to do right now. And then it was loose. So now we can really start putting things back together. Now we can get this idler. And he's got a new nut and another new nut. And we're going to be ready to start throwing stuff back together here. But while I have this thing off, I'm going to go ahead and replace these too. I might as well, right? Let's go get the new ones. Shocks. Since the tracks. And there you have it. On front shock. I think. Yeah, that looks right. I think the back shock's not a plate up on the frame. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just like my blazer. Alright, so. Rear shocks, front shocks. I'm going to go ahead and put this one over there where it belongs. And we're going to get them done. Now, with everything being out of the way, doing the shocks is going to be so massively easy, it's not even going to be funny. But, since I have no spindle right now and nothing holding the lower A-arm in place, I have to get my bottle jack and jack up the A-arm so that the torsion bar doesn't totally rip the A-arm to the floor. <laughs> now, honestly, I'm not entirely certain that that's exactly what will happen, but I'm just gonna say it's a pretty good guess. So, I have my 12-ton bottle jack right here that I'm twisting the top out on right now. And then I'll twist it shut, and then I'll pump it. Ah, it doesn't wanna pump. All right. Give it a little bit of pressure. Take tension off of the shock mount mainly so I can get the bolt out of it. Yeah, there it goes. All right, the shock is at full extension, so getting the bolt out should be rather easy because there's literally no tension on it right now. So, I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, don't lose your washer. 
There's one on the top and the bottom. All right. I gotta get the new shot game. I lose my light in the process. And that's really all there is to that. I'm going to go tighten up the one in the engine bay, which is pretty easily accessible from the top, but not so much from the side, so you can see why I'm doing it from up here. But there you go. I'm going to do the same on the other side, and then we'll start putting other stuff back in. Well, that was unbelievably stupidly long, but one ball joint is pressed into this lower A arm. Hell yes! <laughs> yes! It is flat against the flange and it is tight and it's not going anywhere. I was just sitting here doing this for almost 10 minutes straight it seemed like. I mean I don't know if it really was that long, but I actually had to get the other compressor out because it provides higher pressure than the one in the corner over there does. And this impact wrench with the other one, the other compressor, it wasn't putting out enough pressure to turn the thing while it was impacting, while it was doing its jacking thing. But this one did the trick and now I have just turned it off for a little bit so it can cool off. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the upper ball joint in while I'm waiting for that to cool off. And then I'll move to the other side where I'm going to see if I can do the same thing. Now, the way this worked is, well, this is gonna be the fun part. Yay! All right, so the ball joint is sticking up out of the flange. That's perfect. The hole for the fitting is in almost the right position. It's good enough. All right, this sucker ain't going anywhere now. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this piece here caps off the top so that you're not trying to press down literally on top of the ball joint. Of course, that's obvious right there. What wasn't so obvious is finding the right size uh, hole to fit over the ball joint and not just not touch the ball joint at all. So uh, another old new ball joint here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay, so here's the other new lower ball joint. And, okay, so I have to be able to press on that edge, right? Well, this almost doesn't perfectly do it, but it does a good enough job to get it done. Which is awesome. It worked. It friggin' worked! And that's what makes me happy right now. I was starting to worry for a minute not being able to get this thing to even come in straight, which... <laughs> You really do need to have the ball joint come in straight, otherwise you're just going to ream out the hole and then it won't stay anyway. But I got past that, I got it to go in straight, and it went, and there was something else I wanted to say. But anyway, yeah, that uh, the little hole piece, it slips into here, it's, it's a little adapter, and then I think that's actually stuck to the C-clamp right now. <laughs> because of the pressures required to get it to compress. So I'm gonna have to beat that off later, but that's okay. That's okay. I do not mind. <laughs> the fact is, I was able to do this, and that's just awesome. I was getting a little worried there. I was getting a little worried because the other option is to take the entire A arm off of the truck, torsion bars and all, and take it up to a shop to have it done. I just was not really wanting to do that, so I'm just glad this worked out. And I'm saying that a lot. So, anyway, let me take that off now. And now I can put the new upper in. 
since I don't need to do anything with the differential on this side, I can do that. It won't be a big deal. And then, well, I still need to get a new steering gearbox in there, don't I? <laughs> There's still a lot of stuff I need to do, actually. I want to clean that frame rail right there. It's got a whole bunch of freaking fluid stuck all over it, but we'll see what happens. Ugh, I'm getting tired of messing with this thing. <laughs> Now, compared to doing these lower press fit ball joints, doing the upper ball joints is actually really easy. Because all you got to do is just drop it in place, run the bolts up, and tighten it down. That's really all there is to this one. And then make sure you get your rubber boot in place properly, like that. And yeah, it's all going to fall apart because I'm not doing anything right now but yeah uppers are freaking easy uh, at least the lowers on my blazer were the same as the uppers they were bolted in it's freaking ridiculous the way they did it on these trucks and I want to know why why did they have to make it so difficult <laughs> all right what time is it it's like all right sorry it's almost two o'clock already I started this at about what 11 30 or so Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Alright. I'm not going to get done today again, so no big deal. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. Very, very easy in comparison to the other. Well, even the other compressor isn't getting this one too well, so I'm trying something different here. So let's see how far we can get with this idea. <laughs> it's definitely slow going this way. Thankfully we've only got a little bit left to go before it's finally done. As you can see, there's not that much of a gap left. All I gotta do is close that gap. This thing will be done. And I will never touch another press fit ball joint ever again. she goes baby that's far as she goes no more gap which means I'm never doing this again <laughs> uh, and now I'm never gonna get my friggin socket off the top of this thing because of how hard I was wrenching on it well that's where you come in so I'm gonna beat on it real quick with the impactor It'll also help me get the uh, presser thingy off. Do it! Maybe? Holy shit. That's not cool. <laughs> uh oh. Well, the socket's loose. Now the darn press ain't coming off. Ah! Not cool. Okay, looks like I gotta turn the compressor back on. Oh, well, you turn them both back on, actually. Yeah, I guess 100 PSI ain't quite gonna cut it. I'm gonna need the full 150. Because this one only does 125. 
And I don't even know if that'll be enough. But less than 100, obviously, is not gonna cut it in this case. <laughs> I'm just hoping I didn't get it totally stuck. Because that would suck. Well, I guess I could just take it back off the way I put it on there, right? Use the half-inch ratchet with the gigantic winch bar. Yes! I'm glad I kept this thing now. <laughs> Even though it hasn't been used for its normal purpose since then. <laughs> oh well. We'll get it off here one way or another. Alright, we've built up full pressure. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Alright, so a couple parts are missing here. I got most everything back over on this side. This guy's bolted back in place because I've decided I'm not going to deal with the differential seal right now. I will eventually, but I'm just not up to tearing the differential apart right now. I don't know what I'm dealing with there, so I'm not going to. In fact, that may just be one thing a shop gets to do on this truck. As well as an alignment, of course. But anyway, ball joints are in on this side, both of them. So I'm actually ready to put the spindle back on right now. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the new gearbox in. I've already got the new Pitman arm on it. Tapped it down with this guy right here. And I'm getting ready to put the lock washer and its nut on. And I'm zooming in. Go me. Yeah, so I'm going to put this on it after I clean it up. I'm not putting this disgusting thing on my new parts. And then we're going to slide that back up inside. Get the power steering lines all hooked up. Put some more fluid in it. And get the steering wheel pressed back into it. So we'll get that done. Then the shaft for the pitman arm will be sticking out here. I'll be able to get to it from here, so that'll be fine. I'm also going to install the idler arm. Since I got the old idler arm off, as you saw. And this is the new one, and I'm getting ready to put it all together now. And that goes like that, and then I put this big guy on the end of that. And then it goes in here. So this bolt and this bolt and one bolt underneath are sticking out. I was pointing at the shroud the whole time I said that. Awesome! Funny thing is, the holes to get to them are right here. I had to bend the inner fender out of the way to not only get to the idler arm mounting bolt, but I also had to break the shish out of this side to get to the mounting bolt for the steering box. It's freaking ridiculous. Why do they do that? They block everything so you can't get in there. <laughs> ridiculous. But I got it. And now I'm going to start installating. Now I think what I'm going to do with the center link, instead of putting each individual piece on, I'm going to go ahead and put the tie rods on the center link, both up, both sides, and then I'll thread it in from underneath. So I'll send the tie rod out this side and the other side at the same time. And that way, it'll all just be together. All I gotta do is put the Pitman and Idler arm through the center link and it should be ready to go. So, let's see how well that works out, huh? My current time. <laughs> all right, so I got a big old friggin' nut driver right now because I had to deal with the Pitman arm, but I decided I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this CV joint put back in place the way it's supposed to be, which is actually a surprisingly easy thing to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that real quick. And that's all there is to that. 
I'm just going to show you real quick what happens when you drop a bolt down inside the frame rail because GM was a bunch of nutcases and decided that inside of the frame rail was a perfect place to put three bolts and give you no way to get it back out if you drop it. So, <laughs> well they gave you one way but it's a really big pain in the butt and requires like taking off the entire front end to get to it. But I did this instead. I put my flashlight in the hole after I moved the hook and you can't really see in there because it's such a tight space in fact I can't even see in there anymore but in there I have a grabby tool and my flashlight my flashlight doesn't need to be any in there anymore because I have managed to grab the bolt with the grabby tool and now my flashlight just died. Okay. Anyway, I have managed to grab it, and there it is. Awesome. Now the nice news about it was, the threads were facing the front of the truck. <laughs> if they weren't, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> Take off the bumper, and go for it. That's all I can say. Thankfully this one worked out for me. And now, I'm going to put it back in the hole because I am currently working on putting the idler arm in place. And the steering gearbox is also in place right now. The bolts have not been tightened up, but that is my next thing to do after I get this idler arm bolted in place. And this is the right driver, I think. Yes, it is. And now it is going to go into the hole where it belongs. And then I will go underneath the truck. And, oops, well, I guess I need to grab the nut from above. And then go underneath and move a bunch of crap out of my way in the process because it's all in my way now because I had to remove it from the front. Okay, up under here you see where that bolt comes through. And I need to finagle my way up in there and get my hand. Oh, I dropped the nut. Oh. Ah, it's all grimy and greasy and nice. Now I don't know where the of nut went. Uh, don't look up into the grease as you're trying to move it. I'm being attacked by flying objects here. All right, so what do we got here at about very late evening? What do we got? I have a new message for one. It is 10.48 in the evening. We have steering gearbox installed, lines hooked up. I still need to clip this to the power steering line, but ah, that's easy enough to do. Yep, now that's done. Wrap my, um, that wire needs to come out this way. That goes to my ABS sensor. Okay, so power steering gearbox is in, power steering lines are run, idler arm is in, bolted to the frame, the center link is in, all castle nuts are in, the hubs are back together, the hub assembly is back together, the center nut is back in, ball joint is in, cotter pin in place for the nut on both top and bottom. Cotter pin in place for the tie rod end. It is not adjusted. They are not tightened yet. So they're loose and I can still adjust them if I need to. Other side is exactly the same. All of everything is put together and basically all I need to do now put the rotor on, brake caliper on, grab the other brake pad and put the wheel on and tighten these up once I get them adjusted properly. That's basically all I need to do to have a running truck tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm not really interested in doing anything else tonight. So I think in addition to that before I do anything else like taking off or anything I'm going to go ahead and put the rear shocks on but that's 
kind of trivial at this point now that I got all this stuff back together. It's like, whoa. I actually did get a lot done today. God, okay. The lower ball joints had that separate grease cap, the grease boot on the bottom of it. Had a snap ring on the top of it, which is supposed to fit around the ring just below the flange. And I probably spent about 45 minutes trying to get that shit on us on the flange. And I was like, oh, I was getting say, off because it just was not going. I'd get it clipped on one side, I'd go to clip the other side, and the other side would come off again. It's like, and I ended up, I'm sitting down here, I'm just wailing on it and screaming at it, and I'm just, I ended up just throwing it over in the corner over there. So, that went well. I went and retrieved it and went inside, stopped for a bit, just kind of thought about it. And I ended up grabbing one of the tools out of the, the thingamajigger I was pushing the ball joints in with. Ended up getting that one of the uh, slide, jeez, I can't, I, I am tired. I, I need to like stop and think before I try to make a video. But I used one of the rings one of the long rings and kind of just ran it up beside it and it stayed in place well enough I was able to tap it a little bit with a hammer on a closed in so I wasn't busting the ball joint or anything and it went on so that was awesome that was really really awesome and then I was able to get the knuckle on why can't I remember what I call that thing anyway I got that on with pretty much ease got the nuts all tightened up Ended up having to find another cotter pin because I lost one, but no big deal because I still use all new cotter pins. As long as they're new, I mean, that'll, that'll work. Oh. <laughs> then I did a stupid... Okay. I... <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I took... I had all of the steering components out here on the floor. You remember that from last night, the last video, right? Well, apparently, when I went to put it all back under the truck, the center link got reversed. And I did not realize that until I had the castle nuts plugged in here. They didn't have the cotter pins through yet, but the castle nuts were up and, well, I, I didn't have them snugged up yet, so they were still easy to move out. But the center link was reversed. So like, with the wheel straight where it is right now, the wheels were cocked way over to the right on both sides. And I was like, what the heck? Because I measured out, I measured the original tie rod links at 15 and a half inches for almost the same for both of them. And measured, them, measured these out as I was putting them together to about the same, 15 and a half. And put it all back under there. I'm like, what the heck? What changed? And I ended up having to go back through and look at yesterday's video on the view screen on this camera. And I realized, I'm like, You've nick off Sam. <laughs> and then I just started hysterically laughing because it was just too funny and stupid at the same time. Like, how could I do something like that? Seriously. But anyway, I'm done for tonight. And I just don't feel like doing anymore. So I'll finish this up in the morning and take it over to get aligned. And hopefully they'll be able to do it this time. But for now, video is done i'm going to clean up a little bit so i can be ready for tomorrow instead of just jumping into this thing willy nilly pilly and we'll button this thing up and it'll be great i'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs> I knew that wasn't going to work. I keep saying that, yet I kept keep trying to do the same thing over and over again. I guess I'm Nick Darwin. I am ice over here. Oops. Okay, back the fuck up. You're in my way. Oops.
just, I'll stay. No, no, that doesn't make enough of any sense to stay. 